So now that we have beta the basics down, let's check out one of the uh, best part of any text editor is really the extensions. Because what would a text editor be if it didn't have a bunch of great extensions? Now, a, uh, an, an issue I have with any of these text editors that aren't sublime is that they all lack my favorite extension, which is Hayaku, which is used for CSS uh, completion, like, like Emmet, but much better. So until VS Code has Hayaku, I'm not going to be entirely satisfied. But uh, to be honest, I feel like that's just a personal thing. However, what we do have when we click this extensions button right here in the far left is a complete listing of all these extensions. Now this window, it's okay. It could be nicer. There are some issues with how this works and compared to other platforms like Atom. It's really nice that you can install an extension without having to reload uh, the application itself. If we, let's say, let's go ahead and install this beautify uh, code in place for ES code because it makes your code look nice. Let's go ahead and click install. You'll see it goes and grabs it, which is great. However, it presents us with a reload button and we have to reload and we have to reload. Now the reloading isn't necessarily the issue I have here. You'll notice when we click reload, reload the window, uh, you'll be made very apparent exactly what the problem is. You, you'll notice we get a, a message here saying it remembers the unsaved files. That's fine. Okay, this pops open and check it out. What happened? Well, nothing happened to these files, but the extensions window over here is now just showing you the one you installed. So if we click this, yeah, that's great. But what if we were searching for something, right? Like what if I was searching for a theme? So for instance, one theme I've been really liking is this tenacious theme. If we click this, uh, you can see we get a bunch of these tenacious ones. This one has 4,000 downloads. So it's definitely the one I've been using. So you can see here, looks really nice. I like it a lot. And we can click this install. Okay. And this is, we're gonna, this is going to illustrate the problem pretty quickly. Click reload, reload window. And our extension it just cleared out what we were searching for. A lot of times I'll search for something, I'll install a few things and then wish it was coming right back there. So the reload window, man, it's, it's not great. I wish it didn't do that, but uh, it's at the end of the day, it's, it's just a minor nitpick, right? Another addition to just installing extensions like that, we can also click this dot, dot, dot and show things like show installed extensions, show outdated extensions, the show recommended extensions and popular extensions. Let's see what's popular right now. You can see C sharp for visual studio code is something people like Python, the icons, we can just click install. We can go ahead and click the install debugger for Chrome. Cause that's a really nice one. We could use ES lint cause love me some ES lint, uh, all sorts of stuff. You can see, you just go on and clicking install on a bunch of stuff here. Now you may be wondering if we, install several things, do we have to reload after each one? Well, I'm going to wait for this debugger for Chrome to stop installing. We're going to click reload and check out the status of our plugins. Okay, now that we have all three of those, let's click reload and see if all three of them were officially installed. And as you can see, it did in fact. Now it's giving us a little bit of information about the icons. Anytime VS Code wants you to know some stuff, lets you know up top here. And you'll notice it's also complaining about ESLint right here. Uh, really, this is installed at ESLint, but it's saying I don't have it installed globally, so it's not going to work. And that's no big deal because that's just something if you were using ESLint normally, you would know to do. Let's close this, but you can see all of those were installed. So all of our extensions were installed. We can now go to show recommended extensions and see some of the stuff that it's recommending for us. We have TS Lint for VS Code. If we select the text here, it opens up the README just like Adam does. This isn't as nice looking, let's face it, but uh, you know, how much does that get you really? I, I like when things look nice, but I would take the performance of this app over the niceness of Adam any day. The interface for this is really not that bad. Now TS Lint is for TypeScript. There's no TypeScript in this project. I'm not using it currently, so we can just sort of ignore that. Now what's this other icon right here? Well, this icon takes us directly to the show installed, right? If we were anywhere else, we could click show installed and it's gonna be right here. 
Now let's say we hated this debugger for Chrome and even though it took forever to install and it was a million downloads, we don't like it. You can always disable it for this particular workspace. You can disable it for always or you could just straight up uninstall it. Now you'll disable it always if maybe you're not convinced you need it at this particular time and maybe you want to come back to it. You can disable it for this workspace if maybe this particular project isn't. That might be more uh, more reasonable for something like ESLint, right? Maybe this isn't a JavaScript project. I can come in here and say, hey, disable right now. And then it, like anything in this application, it's going to ask me to reload. So the reloading stuff, again, it's annoying. It's just part of how it is. But at the end of the day, installing extensions is extremely easy. Now, another gripe I have is the fact that it doesn't separate out themes. Uh, we can always get more themes just simply by coming in here and maybe looking for theme. But, you know, it, it would be nice if installing extensions and installing themes was a little bit different. And it would be nice if the themes were not just syntax themes. You know, Sublime does it really nice where they have the themes and then they have the syntax highlighting sort of separate from extensions. No biggie, though. That's not anything that's ever going to get in your way. It's just a minor interface item. So these are extensions for VS Code. It's not the most thrilling thing. It's super easy. You can just search for whatever you're looking for and you can most likely find it or you can do what I do and peruse the popular extensions and sort of see what other people are using to maybe get a handle on what kind of cool stuff is even out there. But if you're wondering, does VS Code have the type of plugin library that something like Atom or Sublime does? With the exception of my favorite package, uh, Hayaku, I have found everything that I'm looking for in this extensions right here. Seriously, everything I'm looking for, the configuration has been nice and easy. And you know, there's a lot of great packages here and you can mostly find something to do what you want it to do as fast as you can type it in. So these are extensions for VS Code. You can see I can scroll down forever and it's never gonna run out of these uh, extensions because there's a ton. Uh, like I said, this platform has a large amount of users and because of that, it has a large amount of nice extensions. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Leave a comment and let me know what your favorite extensions are. I want to know what you're using because uh, in addition to popular stuff, it would be really cool to just sort of see if there's stuff that other people are using that I maybe haven't found yet because it's really hard to find uh, everything. As you can see, there's just so much good stuff here. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.